Hey everyone, it's George from Skysiv here, and in today's video we're going to be learning all about section classification in Eurocode 3 for the design of structural steel sections. Now section classification is a really fundamental concept in structural steel design, and in today's lesson we're going to learn all about what section classification is, how Eurocode uses section classification in calculating section resistance values, and how we can calculate the section classification for different steel shapes. At the end of the lesson we'll also run through some work examples for a section in pure compression, pure bending, and combined bending and compression. So what is section classification? Now, section classification really describes the susceptibility of a shape to local buckling before it achieves its full plastic capacity under bending or compression. And it's best to look at this by looking at the stress distribution for a given section under applied bending. Now, a section can fail in one of two ways, and that could either be a plastic failure, which is when every fiber of the section achieves its yield stress under bending, or it could fail elastically, where we don't achieve the yield stress in every fiber, but we do achieve it in the extreme compression fiber at the top of the section. Now, Eurocode classifies plastic uh, failure sections as class one and two, and elastic failure sections as class three and four. And generally, elastic analysis is used for sections which have local buckling occurring under applied bending or compression which means that either the flange or the web of the section buckles at a plane, reducing the capacity of that section before we achieve the full plastic capacity. So how does Eurocode use section classification? And really what it comes down to is which section properties you use when you're calculating your bending moment, your shear and your compressive resistance for that section. So for class one and two sections, we'll use plastic properties, such as the plastic section modulus. For class three sections, we'll use elastic properties, such as the elastic section modulus. And for class four sections, we use what we call effective properties, which are reduced elastic properties, reduced to the count for the likelihood of local buckling, making parts of the section ineffective. So how do we work out the classification of a section? And this is done by breaking a section into a series of compression elements and determining the slenderness of these elements and comparing them to limits, which are prescribed in Eurocode 3. Now, a compression element here is broken up as either an internal or an outstand element. So the internal elements would be the web of an RHS or an I section, as you can see here in blue, or an outstand element, which is only restrained on one end, such as the flange of an I section or the web of a T section. And we work out the clear length of these elements, which is referred to as C, at the thickness, and then we determine a slenderness ratio for that element. That's then compared to table 5.2 in Eurocode 3 which has a series of limits for different types of stress distributions in those elements. So for internal elements, like the web of an I section, for example, we will then look at the stress distribution in that element, whether it's bending, compression, or combined bending and compression, and we'll compare that C on T slenderness ratio to a limit here. And if we are less than that limit, we will take the classification in that row. So in the example where we have a slenderness which is less than 72 times epsilon, we are class one. And we keep on going, and if we don't pass the class 3 limit, that means your section is class 4. This epsilon value here is related to the yield strength of the material, and it's calculated by the square root of 235 divided by the yield strength. And as you can work out with this here, that means the stronger your material is, the lower the limit is for the buckling of that section, which means that high strength materials often have worse section classifications than lower strength materials. We have another table here for the outstand elements, such as the flange of an I section or the web of a T section. And you can see here that the slenderness limits are much stricter for an outstand than an element restrained on both sides here. We have 72 here for, uh, through 33 here for compression, compared to 9 for compression for an outstand element. So we'll run through some examples now. And the first example we'll look at would be pure compression. So I've got an I section here which is under pure compression. It's 220 meters tall, millimeters tall, sorry, 105 millimeters wide with a 10 mil thick flange and a five mil thick web. Now the stress distribution for this section, is gonna be pure compression. So we'll have every fiber here in compression at a yield strength of 235 MPa. So the first step is working out the slenderness of the elements within this section. And we'll do the web first. So the clear length of the web is 220 minus two times the flange width, which is 10, which comes to 200 millimeters. And the slenderness ratio is that clear length divided by the thickness. So 200 divided by five, 
which is 40. We'll do the same thing for the flange. So remember, it's the outstand part of the flange, so on one side of the web. So it'll be 105 millimeters minus the thickness of the web, which is 5 millimeters, divided by 2, which is 50. And then we'll divide that length by the thickness, which is 10 millimeters, which is 5. And the epsilon value here is the square root of 235 divided by the yield strength, which ends up just being 1. So now we'll compare these slenderness values to table 5.2, and we'll start with the web. So the web is in pure compression, and the slenderness value here is 40, which is greater than 33, greater than 38, therefore the web is class 3. For the flange, the slenderness is 5, which is less than 9, therefore the flange is class 1. And the way the section classification works in Eurocode is you adopt the worst classification out of all the elements in that section. So in this case, the worst element is the web, which has got a classification of three. Therefore, the section classification is three. So we'll now look at a example in pure bending moment. And we'll look at the same section, uh, the same I section with an applied bending moment. And for the plastic stress distribution, you'll have something that looks more like this, where you have half the section in compression and the other half in tension. And the yield strength here again is going to be 235 MPa. Now the the size of all the elements is the same, so the clear length and the slowness ratios are the same at 40 for the web and 5 millimeters for the flange. And then now we'll compare those values to the tables that we have here. So for the web, which is in bending, the limit for class 1 is 72 times epsilon, and we're less than that, we've got 40. So therefore the web is classified as class 1. And for the flange, if we go back to the stress distribution here, you can see that the portion of the flange here is actually in the compression zone. So the flange is not in bending, the, the flange is in pure compression. So we don't look at the bending side of the table here, we just look at the compression side, because the element is in compression. Therefore, we are comparing the slenderness of 5 against 9, so the flange is still class 1. Now you'll notice here that the slenderness limits for bending compared to compression are much higher. The reason for that is the more of the element that's in compression, the more likely it is to buckle. So therefore, if we have an element which is in pure bending, only half of this element is actually in compression. So it's much less likely to buckle. Therefore, the limit for class one is much higher. So we have a class one web and a class one flange, which means that the classification of the section is one. Now we'll do a more complicated example now, which will look at a section which is in major axis bending moment and compression at the same time. And to start off with, it's worth working out some general formula for how we're going to calculate the alpha and the psi values, which are used in the classification here. And to go back quickly to table 5.2, you see that when you go to the bending and compression uh, part of this table, it refers to a alpha value and a psi value here which we'll work out formulas for later, but these are to do with the percentage of the uh, element, which is in pure compression. And then for the elastic uh, analysis, it's the ratio of the minimum bending moment, so in the tension zone, to the yield strength at the top of the section there. So we'll firstly look at the plastic distribution. And if you can imagine a section here, which has got applied bending moment and axial force, the stress distribution will look slightly different. It won't be a 50-50 split like it is for a bending moment distribution. We're going to have slightly more of the section in compression because we have the applied axial force on that section as well. And the way to calculate this alpha value as a, a general approach is we know that in this uh, stress di di diagram here that the tension and compression should equal the applied axial force of the section. So all, everything will resolve to zero. So we can then put together an equation to calculate that. And the best way to look at it is to break this up into a series of blocks. So we're going to know that the top flange is in compression. The portion of the web here, the alpha C, is in compression. The other portion of the web is in tension. And then the bottom flange is in tension. So we'll work out the force from those elements by multiplying the yield strength times the area of that segment. So we'll have the yield strength times the area of the flange in compression plus alpha times the area of the web, so this whole thing here, the ratio which is in compression, and then the tension side is going to be taking away 1 minus alpha, so the remainder of the web uh, in tension, and then the area of the flange which is in tension. You'll notice that the flange value here and the flange value here are the same, so they will cancel out, and you're just left with this here, which is comparing the web 
portion in compression and the web portion, which is in tension. Now, if we then work through that and solve that for alpha, you get an equ a general equation here, which is that alpha equals the applied axial force divided by two times the clear length of the web times the thickness of the web times the yield strength plus 0.5. What you'll notice is if you substitute in an n value here of 0, alpha equals 0 0.5, which is what you get for the pure bending moment case. Now, this is specific to an I section for major axis bending, and this uh, calculation is different for different sections and also different for the minor axis uh, capacity of an I section as well. If you go to the SkySiv website, we've got a full guide on every different type of section here and how you can calculate these alpha and psi values. So then for the elastic stress distribution, the best way to work this out is to work back from the final stress graph from the combined axial force and bending moment on this section. And we know that in this case, the peak stress in the compressive fiber is going to be the yield strength. And we want to work out what the minimum stress at the bottom of the section is going to be. So the best way to look at this is to split this into a bending stress graph and a compression stress graph. We know that in compression, the compressive stress is going to be equal to the applied axial force divided by the gross area of the section. And we can work back from there because we know that the peak stress here is going to be Fy. Therefore, the peak bending stress is going to be Fy minus Nag. We can then use that to work out the sigma min value here at the bottom. And therefore, we can work out the final sigma min value by adding the compressive stress to that value. And we solve this by using similar triangles. So we'll take the ratio of this minimum stress here divided by y, and the ratio of the peak stress at the top divided by h minus y. We'll then solve that for sigma min, which equals the uh, negative y times fy minus the compressive stress divided by the difference between h and y there, plus the compressive stress on the section. Now, the elastic stress distribution, this formula can be used for any section because it doesn't we're not checking areas of the, of the um, section, and it's a linear stress distribution over the length of the section there. So now let's look at an example. So we'll go through the same example. So we'll have got a, the same I section with a 100 kilonewton applied axial force and the bending moment here. And we want to then categorize that section using the bending compression side of table 5.2. So we will work out the centerness of our elements, which we've uh, done before. We don't know what this alpha value is here yet, or what the psi value is here, but we'll use the equations from the previous part of the video to work out these values. So alpha equals the axial force divided by 2 times c times the thickness of the web times the yield strength, plus 0.5, and that equals 0.71. So what that means is 71% of the web here is in compression under this applied axial force here, and whatever bending moment we need to make sure that we get the yield strength reached in the compressive fiber of the section. Now, sigma min, we calculate using the formula from before, and we get a value of a hun negative 170.48 MPa. So what that means is that when the top of the section reaches its yield strength, so 235 MPa, the tension stress at the bottom of the section is negative 170, and we work out the psi value by just dividing sigma min by Fy, and we get a value of negative 0.73. Now, we then use this column of table 5.2 here for the bending and compression table and you can see that these which equation we use depends on the value of the alpha and the psi value here so our alpha is 0.71 so we use the top line therefore there's a slenderness limit of 48.1 which means that our web is class one because the slenderness value we have here is 40. i've put in the values here for the higher uh, classes and you can see that that slenderness value increases as we go and then if we didn't, if our slenderness was greater than 97.88, it would be a class four section. Now, if we go back to the stress distribution quickly, you can see here that the top flange is still always in compression for the plastic or the elastic stress distribution. And therefore, the classification of the flange remains unchanged. So the slenderness is five, and the limit here for pure compression is nine, which means our flange is class one. So for the, the combined major axis bending and compression classification, the section classification there is one. Now we have our own Eurocode 3 steel member design module here at SkySiv, and this automatically calculates the section classification for different sections uh, in accordance with Eurocode 3. You can see here that this actually calculates for pure compression, for bending moment about the Z axis and bending moment about the Y axis too, and it will provide the alpha and the psi values and the classification in that direction too. 
we can do this for database sections, so the standard European sections for eyes, T's, channels, and hollow sections. But we can also design a custom section using this too. So I might take the example we did previously, where we had the uh, 220 tall section by 105 by 10 by 5, and the yield strength was 235. And I will apply a 100 kN force to it here. You can see that we're here working out the classification of that section in each direction. Now, the reason we have a positive and a negative sign here for the classification for major and minor axis bending is that for some sections, the classification is different depending on the direction. So if I were to go to a channel section here, which is not symmetric, and I'll perhaps choose a uh, 41 here, we'll make it a, a high strength section. You notice that because this is not symmetric about the y-axis, it actually has a different classification for positive and negative bending about that y-axis here. So it is a worse section classification for positive bending and a better section, section classification for negative bending too. Now this module also carries out a full suite of uh, section and member capacity checks and also combined action checks in accordance with your code 3. Um, if you want to manually specify a section classification, you can do that using the drop-down here. It specifies class one, two, or three. And we have a free version of this available on our website, which I'll leave in a link below so you can test it out for yourself. Okay, so that was an introduction into Eurocode 3 section classification. If you have any comments or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Thank you.